Welcome to Meet the Candidate with your host, Sulani Madsen. Meet the Candidate is your opportunity to see local candidates and hear about the experiences that have shaped their lives. Meet the Candidate is a nonpartisan community project brought to you by our friends at Greater Spokane Incorporated, Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, We Believe, We Vote, and Better Spokane. Now, here's Sulani. Okay, well, welcome to Meet the Candidate. Uh, my guest for this session is Jacqueline Maycumber, and she's running for the 7th Legislati Legislative District, Position 1. Jacqueline, welcome. Thank you. Thank and, you for having me. And you are currently serving in the position. I am. Okay. Um, I start everything the same way, just asking folks where they grew up and a little bit about their, their childhood education. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I grew up in the 7th District. It was a wonderful childhood um, in the Republic area. I went to Republic High School and graduated there, both my sister and I, and then we went off to college. And uh, yeah, we, we had a really good education at the public school and we were able to um, you know, really look at the diversifying our education. I got a degree in biochemistry and did biomedical research and my sister went on to astrophysics. That's, that's uh, quite a leap from, uh, from the seventh district because it's not, not something you can really apply uh, back home there. Uh, you know, and, and when I was growing up, I, I actually was a part of, um, we did a solid waste uh, community forum, and I was the student representative. And so we had to decide where, you know, solid waste would come from for the county okay. or where we would put it. And they said, you know, everything that you do, we hope that you come back and help. And so that made a, a significant difference, although I did do biomedical research and then became a law enforcement officer. It was on my husband and my heart that someday we can come back and help the community. And so I want my children to feel that way. I want them to expand their education. I want them to travel. I want them to experience the world, but have the opportunity to come back and take care of the community that took care of them. Bring those skills back. Well, I, I know we talked before you uh, you went into law enforcement while you were in Colorado. I think it was. Yes, I did. Yes. What what drew you to that to change? Uh, you know, well, uh, a lot of uh, Lord seeking and prayer. Um, I just I I wanted to serve, and I felt that was the best way. I. I decided that medical school uh, wasn't, after getting a Howard Hughes medical research grant, wasn't the route I wanted to go. And um, it's, it was a top-notch department. It, it was an honor to serve in uniform and to give back to the community. It takes um, a special person to be able to serve people um, in their worst moments mm -hmm. and, and be with them day in and day out uh, when they're having their their worst moments of their life and and be able to give something to them and and help in some way and 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 that was on my heart my personality so I hope to you know provide those skills to help the district too you, you have to have a, a servant's heart to to be a legislator or and to be a law enforcement officer but you also have to have a warrior spirit and that come kind of comes into play in politics too so so it, it means a lot to be able to give to the district the way I have where did you do your uh, biochemistry degree? Where did you go to school? Uh, the Colorado College. Okay, so that was, I knew there was a reason that you ended up in Colorado and then stayed for a while with the... With I did. The I played NCAA school. softball down there, so... Oh, really? How yeah. was the team? Very good. Had somebody else this morning who said he was a pitcher and he still remembered the championship they lost. So <laughs> those things stick in your <laughs> they, head. They do, yeah. There's something about being an athlete and working hard and, you know, not always, you know, it's the experience getting there. Yes, so. and learning how it feels when things don't work exactly. out. Exactly persevering anyway uh, how about some early work experience that kind of shaped your uh, your your views it, you know that those early work experiences are a different kind of education and training uh, yeah actually well and and being an athlete I, I spent a lot of time on the field I right. spent a lot of time training um, and that's where most of my summers I said you know you play when you're an athlete you play not just your season you play a preseason and a postseason so I did a lot of uh, you know athletics and, and I had a lot of odd jobs um, and, it, and it taught me a lot you know you, you have to keep working you don't automatically get a quick response in life sometimes it's the the months and years of you know your perfect swing or you know catching balls or you know I remember when my first job was um, well one of my jobs in, in college was the um, the government relations uh, data analysis individual for the library so I uh, put in the CRS codes after the legislative se session for the law library. 
it was not pleasant. And I, you know, the, and it's much like the RCW's Colorado uh -huh. Revised Statute. And, and back then it was five fifteen an hour. And I, I used to laugh by saying I worked an hour for this hamburger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he'd, and that really helped me understand policy. So I had that that edge that for four years I I worked and I I went over the the policy that came out of the legislature in Seattle or in Colorado, and so I was able to apply that. Uh, to this job now and it was beneficial and you don't realize those little jobs you have really help later. You don't think it's going to pay any, any dividends and then it does. Yep. Yeah. I bet that was helpful as well when you went into law enforcement later. Uh, yeah, m memorizing the CRSs wasn't as difficult. <laughs> yes, it would be a lot easier that way. Well, you mentioned that, how you'd like to encourage your children to, to travel and to experience life. What were some interesting travel experiences you've had that have impacted you? I, well, um, you know, I, ha I have traveled, but I, I want them to be able to uh, have a life of service. Most everything I've done, I did my biomedical research was um, HIV research, um, and then law enforcement was giving back to the community. And now this, I believe, is serving the community. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to serve. And I want them to have a, a, a life of service and, and feel like that that's a purpose, you know, mm -hmm. to give to someone else. So whether they travel a lot or they just go straight into helping others, um, even the smallest job is, is so beneficial to your community. And, and especially these rural areas, as our communities get older, we need to bring back the youth to innovate and, and become entrepreneurs and be able to mm -hmm. develop, you know, businesses and help because we need, we need that help as we get older. Yes, and sometimes the best way to get a job is to make your own job. Absolutely. The basics of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what prompted you to volunteer for elected office? I, I, I know that the draw to service is a piece of it, but mm -hmm. you know there are many places to serve. Why elected office? You know, I had been the legislative assistant for eight years. I had been working for the district quietly. So much like in uniform, you, nobody knows your name. You give, you, um, you're behind the scenes, you, you do the work needed. And uh, you know when the position came open, my husband and I spoke about it. We said, you know, who would fight for our, for our water rights? Who will fight for our property rights? Who will, who will fight to make sure we, we don't restrict the economy to the extent that nobody can start a small business, which is the backbone? Mm -hmm. um, so, so who's willing to do, do that? And my husband said, you know it it's time that you did it. And, and that was something that I, I wasn't even considering. After eight years, yeah. you know, you, you, you have your head down, you just do the job. And, and he said, you know, we need you. We need you there. We have a ranch. We have kids. We want them to come back. And, and it's just year after year watching your kids graduate, you know, saying goodbye to the senior class, and then constantly restricting the economy to where they can't come back and help and and it becomes more difficult and you're watching those family farms break up and and you know it's time that we we create an econ economy that they can come back and that they don't have to move out and they can you know provide and 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 have that opportunity so that's what I'm here to do okay well I think that uh all of that comes back to the, the, the last question that I like to ask everybody, which is how do you see the duties of this elected office and why should voters choose you? Well, I think it's so important, you know, as, as, I, as I talk to my parents in the community, um, my neighbors, the children, they don't have a lobbyist. You know, they don't have someone voicing for them over there on the west side. And sometimes it feels like there's nobody fighting for them. And so that, that is my job. Uh, my daughter looked at me in, in the car the other day, and I, these two boys, our neighbors, were going down to the creek to go fishing. And I said, that, that, that was, a, I said, it's adorable. And she said, Mom, they're 12. They're not adorable. And um, I said, no, you know, that, that means a lot. And she looked at me, and she said, thank you. She goes, we know what you're doing. It, it is hard, but we're a team, and my classmates thank you, my friends thank you, and I appreciate what you do. And that means the world. That's the whole reason to do it, because we need hope in some of these areas, and we need someone to go in and to have that voice and fight for the community, and I'm willing to do that. Okay, that's a pretty good ending pitch for why people should vote for you. And uh, Jacqueline, I wish you a, a safe and uh, happy journey for your campaign this year. Thank and thank you so much for coming thank into you. the studio in Spokane. Thanks for watching Meet the Candidate. Spokane Talks thanks our community minded partners, Greater Spokane Incorporated, the Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, We Believe We Vote, and Better Spokane for helping make Meet the Candidate possible.